unemployment. We are four years away from being Greece, and we're going to do what we've always done. The reason you can freeze federal pay is because there's absolutely no inflation in this country. And so instead of giving a raise, we don't. And every private sector business out there today <clears throat> is getting extremely more amount with less. To the tune that the productivity in the private sector was up 6.8%. If we had that same kind of private sector productivity in the federal government, we could lose 150,000 employees and do the same thing. But we won't buy what is necessary, the necessary pain to protect this country for its future. Now, let me go through. The chairman mentioned unobligated balances, but he spoke about obligated balances. We're not talking about money that has been obligated. We're talking about hundreds of millions and billions of dollars that is not obligated. <clears throat> Last year, at the end of the fiscal year, there was an excess of $700 billion from the previous year that was unobligated sitting there. So it's, an, it's about managing our money properly. That's like saying if you have $30,000 in a savings account and you want to buy a new home, you're going to leave the $30,000 there and go borrow $60,000. No, you're going to use part of that to buy your new home. So we, don't, we have the same approach that is disgusting America. We can't. We can't. What we can do is borrow against the future of our children. And that's what this bill does. So the first time we come out here with two good amendments that will offer a choice for the senators of this body to actually make a down payment on change in this country, to make a true down payment on change, we get the same thing I've heard for five and a half years, is we can't. Well, let me tell you what we can do. We can cap federal employees. We've added 180,000 federal employees in the last 17 months in this country. By the way, their average salary is $30,000 more a year than the private sector. Their benefits are $40,000 a year, which is twice what it is in the private sector. So capping federal employees is a great way to start slowing down the growth and cost of government. And if the bureaucracy isn't responding, then it requires management changes rather than adding more people. The worst managers in the world always give the excuses, I need to have more people rather than I need to be creative about getting more out of the people that I have today. We need to change the standard under which we operate our government. We need to expect more, and we need to pay less. The American people cannot afford the government that we have. We are unaffordable. And the chairman brings to the floor a bill that is more of the same. Now, you can be critical of what we've offered. We don't have the advantages of the staff that the chairman has. But this is an honest attempt to make it a, an attempt to pay so we don't charge it to our children. Notice that he didn't say anything about the savings of $4.6 billion for not printing this every day that nobody reads but reads on the Internet. But yet we're going to spend $460 million a year printing government reports from this body and the White House that nobody looks at in hard. Didn't say a thing about that. I, I would assume you'd take that by unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman, that we would cut $4.6 billion from the printing costs of the American government. We didn't hear anything about that. That's not one of the bad ideas. We didn't, weren't attacked on that. This federal government has to change if our kids are going to have a future. And it isn't going to change until we have the courage and, and the fortitude to start making the hard choices. What the Appropriation Committee has come out and said, we're not going to make hard choices. We're just going to borrow the money. How many of you really think the war is an emergency? How long have we known? How long have we been in Afghanistan? It's not an emergency. Here's the definition of our own rules for emergencies. Nothing in this bill meets that except FEMA. Nothing. And yet we have the gall to bring to the floor a bill and call it an emergency so because we don't want to have to pay for it. We don't want to make half tough votes. We don't want to have to make choices between competing priorities. We're kicking the can down the road and we're kicking the soup that was left in the can all over our kids. That's what we're doing. We lack courage. It's not popular. It's not fun to make the hard choices. 
But we don't have any leadership that will come and bring in hard choices. That's why you've got this amendment. Had you brought this amendment and you all made the choices, you probably wouldn't have gotten much kickback. But we decided we're just going to charge it to our children. And guess what's coming after this? Another $200 billion that isn't paid for. Since January, since the chairman of this committee voted for PAYGO, we have borrowed $173 billion outside of PAYGO because we voted and said it didn't count. And we had this wonderful celebration that we're not ever going to borrow money again. We're only going, we're going to live within PAYGO. And every time it's been there, we've kicked it down the road. PAYGO means nothing. What it means is, American people, you pay and we'll go spend it. That's what it means. And that's what this bill does. Is American people, you kids, you grandkids, you're going to pay. We're going to go spend it. And how you're going to pay? Your standard of living is going to decline. So we're, this body, Republicans and Democrats are like, are complicit in ruining the future for our children. It's time we changed. And we, we have a committee that makes fun of attempts to try to change things and, and actually stretches the truth. This isn't going to cost one TSA person their job. It ain't going to cost one FBI. This government is so fat and so overladen with excess that any smart manager can come in and streamline it and we could save 10%, and the American people know that. We've got 12 million people on SSI and SSDI. You know what we've discovered? 600,000 of them are operating commercial vehicles right now, but they're disabled. You know, we've got all sorts of fraud going on. We won't address it. We won't fix it. There's waste. There's at least $350 billion that the American public, maybe not this body, would agree we could cut out of the discretionary and fraud in Medicare tomorrow and nobody would feel a thing. And yet we have a stoic appropriation committee that comes to the floor and tells us we can't pay for it. Well, it's not that we wanted to pay for it. We didn't want to pay for it. Because the staff on the appropriation committee knows where the dollars are. But they weren't told to pay for it. And they're not going to be told to pay for the extender bill coming either. So what will have happened since February 12th when we passed PAYGO? I'll tell you what will have happened. 500 billion, a half a trillion dollars, more in spending that is unpaid for, that is charged to our kids, and that'll happen before July 1st. So in four and a half months after we say, we're gonna put in the discipline, we're not going to spend money we don't have, we're gonna spend another half a trillion dollars. No wonder the country's sick of Washington. Our behavior causes them to wonder about the future of our country. So I don't apologize for offering this amendment. I hope you vote against it because the voters this time around are going to be looking at how you vote and whether you're voting to make hard choices, whether you're willing to eliminate things, maybe some things that are good but are not as good as what we need to be doing and making a priority. But we don't have that courage. And my, my challenge to my colleagues in the Senate is let's buck up. It's okay to take heat from the special interest, the well-connected, and the well-endowed. And let's do what is the best right thing for the country, not the easy thing for us. Because this bill, the way it's written right now, is the easy thing for us. With that, I yield the floor.